Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Time to discuss further into the strategy for integration. And now we ask ourselves, well, can we integrate all continuous functions? Basically, uh, when, when you're dealing with integration and looking at strategies, the question always arises, will our strategy for integration enable us to find the integral of every continuous function? Yeah, and for example, can it uh, can we use that strategy that I showed in my earlier video to to evaluate the following integral here, which is integral of e to the power of x squared dx. Now the answer to this uh, question is well, basically no. Well, at least not in the terms of the functions that we are uh, uh, familiar with. Basically, the functions that I have covered in my video so far are called elementary functions. And these are basically the polynomials, the rational functions, the power functions such as x to the power of n, the exponential functions such as a to the power of x, just to let you know the difference between power and, and exponential, and, uh, base, and also trigonometric and inverse trigonometric functions, as well as hypo, uh, hyperbolic and inverse hyperbolic functions, and all functions that can be obtained from these that I just mentioned by the five operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and composition. This one is just when you put a function inside a function, let's f of g of x, etc. That's composition. And for example, this the following uh, function is an elementary function right here. So yeah, this one, uh, it has basically a polynomial inside a square root right here. There's a ln uh, function here. Uh, there's a, and then we have the composition, we have addition, subtraction, this is an exponential function like that. So these are just basic elementary functions. And in fact, this, this function right here is an elementary function as well. And now I'll explain further in a bit why uh, basically we can't integrate this function. So basically, uh, I mean integrate in terms of a elementary function. Um, now if f, basically if f is an elementary function, then the derivative uh, f prime is an ele elementary function, because when you take a derivative of this, uh, you, you get basically an elementary function. Because you're not really changing uh, the actual function to something different. Uh, then basically, but, so the derivative is an elementary function, but the integral doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be an elementary function. For example, if we consider uh, that same function we were dealing with above, so let's consider this function f of x equals 2e power of x squared. So this function is continuous. You put in any value for x, it doesn't. You're not going to have it uh, undefined. So everywhere it's continuous for any x value. So this means that its integral exists. And if its integral exists, then we can define f as basically the integral of this function e of x squared dx. Yeah, and, and thus we know basically by part one of the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have something like this, where that's the antiderivative. The derivative of this integral or the antiderivative is basically the integrand function inside e to the power of x squared. So what this is showing is, yeah, is basically that, well, this function has an integral and this function itself is an elementary uh, function. Yes, yeah, so basically thus the function f, which is this right here, e to the power of x squared, has an antiderivative of f, or the integral, but it has been proved actually that f, or this function right here, this integral, uh, is not, yeah, not an elementary function. And uh, also to get to the proof of this, that's more complicated than uh, I'm going to go through right now. But basically, whether function is elementary or not can be proven by the Rich algorithm, and uh, or Rich. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It was basically named after the American mathematician Robert Henry Rich, who developed the algorithm in 1968 and called it the the decision procedure, since it is a method, basically for deciding whether a function has an elementary function as an uh, infinite integral. I mean, indefinite integral, and basically, if it does, determining that indefinite integral. Indefinite just means you're not doing integral from, let's say, from zero to three or whatever. It's not definite, so it's just uh, the function itself, and not necessarily numerical answer. So basically, this means that no matter how hard we try, we will never succeed in evaluating f, which is well, the integral of e x squared 
e to the power of x and then squared like that dx that's the capital F in terms of functions we know but basically also in my later videos however I will show how to express that integral as an infinite series in fact we could solve many functions using this infinite series method I'll go over it later on and also the, the, the same can be said for the following integrals as well integral of ex divided by x integral of sine x squared or cos e, e to the power of x or this uh, square root x cubed plus one this one over ln x this sine x over x you could uh, you could try solving these and um, don't be surprised if you do not get the answer without using all uh, without using infinite series uh, obviously and in fact also the majority of elementary functions don't actually have elementary antiderivatives it's just that the ones that you see in school or your exam uh, they they are the exception but not not the rule or the the norm so what you see in school are usually just functions for you to work out uh, but more often than than not they have no uh, elementary antiderivatives Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this uh, pretty abstract video uh, uh, answering this question. Can we integrate all continuous functions? Uh, and, and the answer is no. Anyways, uh, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.